हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक इन दिस ई लर्निंग सीरीज होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर सेफ एट योर होम इन दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडेमिक सो स्टे सेफ एंड स्टे पॉजिटिव वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर द एंटी ट्यूबरकुलर ड्रग्स फर्स्ट पार्ट इन दैट वी हैव सीन द वेरियस फर्स्ट लाइन एंड सेकेंड लाइन एंटी ट्यूबरकुलर ड्रग्स and we have seen uh, the various characteristics of them their mechanism of action their uses adverse effect contraindications okay so today we are going to see the second part of anti tubercular drugs in which we are going to learn the treatment of tuberculosis in various categories like drug resistant tuberculosis mono drug resistant mdr tuberculosis so we will see this then we are also going to cover in this the treatment of tuberculosis in pregnant female treatment of tuberculosis in breastfeeding mothers then we are going to see the chemo prophylaxis of tuberculosis treatment of tuberculosis in hiv positive patient when the hiv and the tb coexist how we are going to treat the patient and then the last we are going to see the treatment of mac infection yesterday we have seen the mac yes what is the mac mycobacterium avium intracellular complex infection which is a opportunistic pathogen causing the infection in the hiv patients mainly okay so now proceed so uh, in this uh, slide we will just revise the classification which we have seen in the first lecture especially the alternative grouping so anti tubercular drugs are classified into the five groups we have seen the group 1 is a first line oral drugs in which there is a isoniazide rifampicin pyrazinamide and ethambutol remember streptomycin uh, we have shifted it from group 1 into the group 2 that is among the injectable drugs the group 2 includes injectable drugs which include the streptomycin canamycin amikacin and capreomycin all this belongs to the aminoglycoside groups okay so group 3 includes the fluoroquinolones which includes the ofloxacin leofloxacin moxifloxacin and ciprofloxacin okay group 4 include the second line drug but but which are given by the oral route okay so ethionamide prothionamide cyclosirin terizidone paraminosalicylic acid rifabutin and rifapentin out of which ethionamide and prothionamide they are belong to the same group while uh, are having a same chemical structure and cyclosirin and terizidone also having a same structure so there may be a cross resistance among these two uh, drugs so either ethionamide or prothionamide can be given in uh, various tuberculosis or either cyclosirin or terizidone but not the both in the single individual patient and group 5th we have classified as a unclear efficacy drug so these are the drugs which are mostly tried in to the extensive drug resistant tuberculosis which will see in that the bedaquiline is the latest one which is developed uh, it acts by inhibiting the mycobacterial atp synthase activity so it is also tried mostly in the drug resistant tuberculosis then clarithromycin macrolide group clofazimine as i told you one of the anti leprotic drug linezolid this is a very good drug for mrsa infection coamoxiclav that is amoxicillin plus clavulinic acid and then imipenem and cilastatin so just to uh, before actually starting with the anti tubercular chemotherapy the this slide which we have already seen in the first lecture i want to revise that as you know whenever the there are the tuberculous bacilli present in a particular individual there are various sub populations of tubercular bacilli and particular drug is active against that sub population so fast growing or fast multiplying bacilli which are which require the higher oxygen and yes where the oxygen is high in the wall of cavity okay caseous necrosis is within and the cavity wall so in the wall of the cavity where oxygen tension is high the fast multiplying bacilli are growing and isoniazide is a particular drug which is very effective against this fast multiplying bacilli second we have seen intermittent growing means these are like they are not continuously growing they are intermittently growing that's why they are also called as a spurters and they are located within the caseous necrosis okay so drug which is active is rifampicin against this spurters 
and third is a slow growing these are the uh, bacilli which are located intracellularly within the macrophages where the ph is acidic okay and which drug is active against the bacilli in the acidic ph medium yes it is a pyrazinamide <coughs> So why am I revising this? That is the gen what are the general principles of anti-tubercular chemotherapy that no patient is treated with a single drug. Always a combination of drug is selected first to cover all subpopulations of tubercular bacilli and second to prevent the emergence of resistance. So that we can preserve this drug for the more generations okay but there are sir, one subpopulation of bacilli which is a dormant which is not inhibited effectively by any of the anti-tubercular drug okay now actual rntcp regimen or which is also called as a dots regimen okay and that is a short course chemotherapy so when the who introduced this uh, treatment of tuberculosis in 1995 uh, before that the tuberculosis is going to be treated for at least 18 to 24 months but because of this dots regimen we have reduced the treatment of tuberculosis to the six to eight months okay but exception is the mdr and xdr tuberculosis and rifampicin resistant tuberculosis where i'm talking about the drug sensitive tuberculosis so we have reduced the treatment at least to the six to eight months and that is called as a short course chemotherapy and that is conducted under the dots so i have already told you what is the dots yes directly observed treatment and as for short course chemotherapy directly observed treatment short course chemotherapy now rntcp has brought out their latest guidelines in 2018 remember 2018 so our kdt and other books which might be have published before that they are not including the latest guidelines of 2018 in which there is only one change which i am going to tell you uh, in your books mostly they have mentioned about the 2016 guidelines but after that 2018 guidelines have been already come so we were going to cover that so as per that guidelines they have specified that there is an extensive use of the drug susceptibility testing okay, or drug sensitivity testing to effectively treat the drug resistant tuberculosis there are the various tests which are carried out like liquid culture and drug susceptibility test okay that is called lcdst and faster genotypic test that is called as a like example is a line probe assay lpa for detecting the r and h resistance rifampicin and isoniazid r for rifampicin h for isoniazid so to, for detecting both r and h resistance the test which is carried out which is line probe assay lpa and the next test which is carried out only for conducting the rifampicin resistant is a CBNAT. What is the long form? Cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. This you will cover more in the depth in microbiology or medicine department. Okay. Now what? <clears throat> when we are giving the this DOTS regimen or short course chemotherapy, then there are mainly two phases in which we are giving the drug. The first is a intensive phase and the second is a continuation phase. Okay, intensive phase and continuation phase. So as the name itself suggests, intensive means just like in a general pharmacology, if you compare a loading dose and maintenance dose. So intensive means we are aggressive in this phase. We are giving more drugs in this. So all anti-tuberculous regimen have an initial intensive phase which may vary from four drugs to seven drugs remember there are various categories of tuberculosis so in some tuberculosis intensive phase is carried out with four drugs in some tuberculosis it is carried out with maximum of seven drugs so what is the aim of this intensive phase yes to rapidly kill all the subpopulations of tubercular bacilli bring about sputum conversion means from the sputum positive to the sputum negative and afford the fast symptomatic relief symptomatic relief from which symptoms yes from the fever cough okay night sweets all these symptoms okay Re uh, remember weight loss takes a time but other symptoms which are the uh, like fever cup they can be improved so this is the aim of intensive phase which is carried out for the four to seven with with the four to seven drugs okay 
duration may vary depending upon the various types of tuberculosis and this is followed by the next phase which is a continuation phase that is called cp so intensive phase short form ip continuation phase short form cp this continuation phase now we have aggressively treat the tuberculosis already in intensive phase now we are going to reduce the number of drugs which we are going to give and here we are only giving three to four drugs in some tuberculosis three drug in some four drugs now which are which is our aim to eliminate the remaining bacilli so some bacilli which are still left behind in this first uh, after the intensive phase to eliminate those bacilli so that relapse does not occur okay so our aim is to eliminate the remaining bacilli and prevent the relapse remember if we are not going to handle the patient of tuberculosis correctly means either the patient has not taken the drugs or there might be a wrong drugs given so there are very high chances of relapse of tuberculosis and the relapse of tuberculosis obviously is dif difficult to treat okay so intensive phase and continuation phase intensive phase with four to seven drugs continuation phase with three to four drugs now rntcp 2016 as well as 2018 they are quite similar in this they have classified the tuberculosis cases into the six types of tuberculosis and my main focus in this lecture is on these six types of the tuberculosis the first one is a drug sensitive tuberculosis okay the drug sensitive tuberculosis second multi drug resistant tuberculosis that is also called as a mdrtb third rifampicin resistant tuberculosis this is the one of the newer category which is there which was the, not there in the 2010 or before that okay so rifampicin resistant tuberculosis rrtb fourth is a mono resistant tuberculosis okay as the name suggests mono means one drug we will see what is that then the poly drug resistant tuberculosis more than one uh, drug resistant and last but not least is a extensive drug resistant tuberculosis okay so we are going to discuss what are the definitions of this and what are the treatments for these various types of the tuberculosis so drug sensitive tuberculosis mdr tb rifampicin resistant tb mono tb mono resistant tb poly drug resistant tb and extensive drug resistant now the first one is the drug sensitive tuberculosis so we'll first see the definition and then treatment so drug sensitive tuberculosis means the bacilli patients bacilli are susceptible to all five first line anti tubercular drugs remember we are taking the streptomycin is also in account so bacilli are susceptible to all five drugs which are the isoniazid rifampicin pyrazinamide ethambutol and streptomycin so bacilli are resist susceptible to all resistant to none okay all new tuberculosis patient who have never taken any anti tubercular drug atd means anti tubercular drug or have taken them for less than one month presume to have drug sensitive tuberculosis this is the newer part the patient has neither taken any anti tubercular drug kabhi bhi nahi liya hai ya fir ek mahine se kam liya hai okay to usko hum drug sensitive tuberculosis category mein rakhenge clear then the second type of tuberculosis is a multi drug resistant tuberculosis though the name suggests multi drug resistant tuberculosis mainly here the bacilli are resistant to our most two effective drugs from first line so which are they to the r and h means to the rifampicin and isoniazide so bacilli are resistant to both rifampicin and isoniazide which is our main therapy that's why it is called mdr tuberculosis apart from this the bacilli may or may not means with or without the resistance to any number of other first line drugs so other drugs means which are pyrazinamide ethambutol and streptomycin so bacilli may be resistant to them or may not be but still the bacilli if it is resistant to both r and h it is going to classify among the multi drug resistant tuberculosis okay the third is the rifampicin resistant tuberculosis now this is the newer category so here bacilli are resistant to only r means rifampicin but not to isoniazid and with or without the resistant to other anti tubercular drugs 
मीन्स यहाँ पे क्या है रिफेपिसिन को रेजिस्टेंट है आइसोनाइजोड को नहीं है और बाकी तीन ड्रग पायराजेनामाइड इथाम्बुटोल स्टोटोमाइसिन को हो भी सकते हैं या नहीं भी हो सकते सो दे मे बी और मे नॉट बी बट रिमेंबर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टैगलाइन दीज पेशेंट्स आर ऑल्सो ट्रीटेड एज हैविंग एम डी आर ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस सो रिफेम्पिसिन रेजिस्टेंट ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस ओनली रेजिस्टेंट टू द रिफेम्पिसिन नॉट टू एनी अदर ड्रग स्टिल वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रीट एज एम डी आर ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस ओके सो यू कैन सी द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ रिफेम्पिसिन विच इज नाउ मोर देन द आइसोनाइजेड ओके नेक्स्ट द फोर्थ ट्राइप इज अ मोनो रेजिस्टेंट ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस here the bacilli are resistant to one first line anti tubercular drug but not are resistant but they are not resistant to the rifampicin rifampicin chhod ke baki jo char drug hai usme se kisi ek ko resistant agar hai to we are calling it as a mono resistant tuberculosis means isoniazid इथेम्बुटॉल पायराजेनामाइड और स्टेप्टोमाइसिन किसी एक को अगर रेजिस्टेंट है तो दैट इज मोनो रेजिस्टेंट टेबर क्लासेस लेकिन रिपेम्पिसिन को नहीं बिकॉज वे ऑलरेडी सीन रिपेम्पिसिन रेजिस्टेंट इज अ कैटेगराइज एज एम डी आर टेबर क्लासेस ओनली पॉली ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट टेबर क्लासेस हियर द बैसेला आर रेजिस्टेंट टू मोर देन वन फर्स्ट लाइन एंटी ट्यूबर क्लर ड्रग बट दे आर नॉट रेजिस्टेंट टू आर एंड एच तो आर और एच छोड़ के बाकी जो तीन ड्रग बचे पायराजेनामाइड इथाम्बुटोल एंड स्ट्रेप्टोमाइसिन उनमें से किसी दो ड्रग को बेसिला दे आर रेजिस्टेंट ओके लाइक पायराजेनामाइड इथाम्बुटोल और स्ट्रेप्टोमाइसिन बट दे आर नॉट रेजिस्टेंट टू आर एन एच बिकॉज इफ दे आर रेजिस्टेंट टू आर एन एच देन वी आर गोइंग टू क्लासीफाई दैट एज एम डी आर ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस एंड नॉट एज अ पी डी आर और पॉली ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस ओके क्लियर and then the last is a xdr tuberculosis that is called as a extensive drug resistant tuberculosis here the mdr tb case means already the patient is mdr tuberculosis means what it is resistant to h and it is resistant to r apart from h and r resistance when the bacilli are re additionally resistant to one of the fluoroquinolone and one of the second line injectable anti tubercular drug so which are the fluoroquinolones yes ofloxacin leofloxacin moxifloxacin or ciprofloxacin and which are the second line injectable anti tubercular drug canamycin amikacin and capreomycin so the here the bacilli is resistant to total four effective bactericidal drug okay which are the most efficacious drug till date we have that is h plus r plus one of the fluoroquinolone plus one of the second line injectable anti tubercular drug and that's why xdr tuberculosis is very difficult to treat and it is uh, creating a challenge for the scientist as well as the, all the medical faculty okay so we are going to revise once again in the coming slide uh, about the these various types of the tuber now the first one that is a drug sensitive tuberculosis so what is the definition the bacilli are susceptible to all the drugs they are not resistant to any drug like a new patient or a patient who have taken less than one month okay so there are two categories they have made in this the first one is a new patient as you can see in the table and the second one is a previously treated patient what do you mean by न्यू पेशेंट मीन्स वन हु इज ऑब्वियसली कमिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम और टेकन फॉर लेस देन वन मंथ वॉट इज द प्रीवियसली ट्रीटेड मीन्स द पेशेंट हैज आइदर कंप्लीटेड द ट्रीटमेंट सक्सेसफुली एंड नाउ अगेन कम पॉजिटिव विद द टूबर क्लॉसिस दैट इज कॉल्ड रिलैप्स एंड देन द सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज द फेल्यूअर मीन्स दो दो वी हैव गिवन द treatment for the 6 month or 8 month even after completing the treatment the patient is never declared of cured so that is a failure of anti tuberculosis drug and third is the default means patient have not taken the treatment for the complete duration so that is a default so there are two categories new and previously treated now listen carefully previously before 2018 guidelines all the guidelines maybe in the 2006 2010 2016 there are the differences in the new and previously treated patient okay maybe they may be categorized as a category 1 and category 2 but now we are not going to term those as a category 1 and 2 we are going to term as a new and previously treated patient but now the as per the 2018 guidelines 
ओके इंटेंसिव फेज एंड कंटिन्यूशन फेज फॉर बोथ न्यू एंड प्रीवियसली ट्रीटेड पेशेंट इज सेम दैट इज फॉर टोटल सिक्स मंथ ड्यूरेशन सो विल सी वॉट इज इन इंटेंसिव फेज इंटेंसिव फेज इन बोथ इज अ टू एच आर जेड ई दिस टू इंडिकेट्स द मंथ्स so for 2 months we are giving this four drug that is h r z e h isoniazid r rifampicin z pyrazinamide e ethambutabol all these four drugs are given for first 2 months in the intensive phase yes i already do we are aggressive we are giving more drugs so that to rapidly kill the bacilli and brings the sputum conversion in the patient so this is for 2 months and this is followed by continuation phase for 4 month in this we are going to give the three drugs okay so we have omitted the z that is pyrazinamid and rest remaining three drugs that is h isoniazid r rifampicin and e ethambutol we have kept these four drugs so so 2 hr z e and 4 hr e is the treatment in the drug sensitivity tuberculosis in the both new and previously treated patient so total 6 month duration treatment okay now next part previously there were two regimens either the bi weekly regimens or daily regimens okay so uh, as you know these patients how to take the treatment for this uh, long duration okay that is a 6 months so compliance is a major issue and uh, we are giving the treatment as a dots means directly observed treatment what is meaning or directly observed means in the presence of healthcare worker so to come back in the hospitals or into the um, our dots center remember our college is also one of the dots center so to come back every day for 6 months is quite challenging as far as the compliance is concerned that's why previously there is a bi weekly regimen so rather than giving all this four drug daily there is a there are only given only twice weekly okay but in the recent guidelines there are there is no provision for bi weekly regimen so patient has to come daily and has to take the drugs daily okay uh, for this both intensive phase and continuation phase now coming to the doses of drugs we have not covered the doses of drugs in the first lecture also so what are the doses of drugs so they are the class are, um, uh, given as per as the milligram per kg basis so this is a table which is uh, given so first one is isoniazid or h the daily dose of isoniazid is a 5 mg per kg 5 mg per kg okay so remember uh, if we are correct uh, accounting the normal human being so we mostly take into account the 60 kg as the normal healthy human adult weight so if we multiply 5 by 60 then it will be a 300 mg so roughly no dose of isoniazid in adult is 300 mg okay though it is not uh, like this in this uh, recent guidelines so we will see in the next slide rifampicin or rifampicin uh, rifampin the dose is 10 mg per kg so roughly 600 mg for the adult third is a pyrazinamide or z here dose is quite high that is a 25 mg per kg so roughly you can see a 1500 mg per kg the fourth drug is a ethambutol which is a 15 mg per kg so roughly 900 mg per kg and streptomycin which is a injectable drug not a oral drug that is a 15 mg per kg again almost 900 mg so remember the first four drugs they are the oral streptomycin is injectable as we have already seen there is no role of streptomycin in drug sensitive tuberculosis only first four drugs we are going to give so these are the mg per kg doses but it is not possible every time to calculate the doses on the basis of the weight so the rntcp has now come with the uh, dose combination of this anti tubercular drug okay so uh, we have already seen the fixed dose combination means in a single tablet all four drugs in intensive phase or all three drugs in continuation phase are there combined okay so what is the advantage this ensures that the patient takes all the drugs and the resistance is not fostered remember if you are going to tell to the patient to take to to take all the four drugs at a different times of day for the 
uh, either two months in intensive phase or three drugs in the four month, for four month duration in continuous phase it becomes very difficult as far as the compliance is concerned so the patient may tend to forget the dose that's why the rntcp are now come with the fixed dose combination and for operational purposes they have made the fdc tablet so for in this chart you can see the intensive phase HRJD. So in one tablet there are four drugs. While in continuation phase there are three drugs. HRE. In this continuation phase there are the three uh, drugs in one tablet. Now they have made four categories of the weights of the patient. Okay. The first one is 25 to 39 kg. Second is 40 to 54 kg. Third is a 55 to 69 kg and fourth is more than 70 kg. So these are the four categories of the patient as far as the weight is concerned. Now you can you are not able to see the weights less than 25. Yes, for the less than 25, we have to individualize the dose depending upon the milligram per kg basis as we have seen in the previous slide and there is no fixed dose combination for these patients. Okay, especially the children you can see. So for the first 25 to 39 kg that is written 2 so what is it means 2 in intensive phase 2 tablets so the patient has to take 2 tablets in intensive phase as well as 2 tablets in the continuation phase now what is the one uh, strength of one tablet that is written under uh, uh, in uh, below that chart in intensive phase one tablet contains h 75 mg r 150 mg z 400 mg and e 275 mg this is the strength of one tablet so we are going to multiply by 2 when we are dealing with 25 to 39 kg that is already available nothing we have to made separately for 40 to 54 kg we have to give the three tablets in intensive phase three tablets in continuation phase 55 to 69 four tablets in intensive four tablets in continuation and more than 75 tablets in each okay so if you roughly calculate for the 55 to 69 kg that is the third category the dose of isonazide will come 300 milligram rapamycin 600 milligram pyrazinamide 1600 milligram and the ethambutol almost 875 milligram okay so that is our uh, dose we have calculated uh, on a 60 kg basis in the previous slide so this is all about the doses and fixed dose combination in the drug sensitive tuberculosis so uh, once again repeating 2 HRZE and 4 HRE the intensive phase 2 HRZE continuation phase 4 HRE now the second type of tuberculosis which is important is a multi drug resistant tuberculosis here we have seen already that MDR TB is a resistance to both H and R means isoniazid and rifampicin but it is uh, uh, but and it may be associated with resistance to other first line drug okay so here is there is a more rapid course with worse outcomes and there is a complex treatment now multiple second line drug regimens are available for the mdr tb which are longer which are more expensive and more toxic obviously we are going to give the more drugs so toxicity will be more coming into the okay, taking into the account the incidence of mdr tuberculosis it is a 3% in new tuberculosis cases while 12 to 17% in retreatment cases okay so that is a quite high incidence as per who india has the highest number of mdr tuberculosis cases in the southeast asia region so we are at a higher risk we have to take the precaution of these things that there should be a reduction in the number of mdr tuberculosis so mdr tuberculosis resistance both h and r so now going to the treatment now already bacilli are resistant to the h and r so we cannot give these three two drugs so which drugs now we have to give general principles of the treatment of mdr tuberculosis so regimen should have at least four drugs okay whether it is intensive phase or whether it is continuation phase at least four drugs should be there but often six drugs are included as far as intensive phase is concerned since the efficacy of some may be uncertain so mostly it is a six drugs in intensive phase and four drugs in continuation phase 
रिलायंस अबाउट इफिकेसी में बी प्लेस्ड ऑन द रिजल्ट ऑफ द बेसिस ऑफ रिजल्ट ऑफ ड्रग्स सक्सेप्टेबिलिटी टेस्ट दैट इज अस टी ओके वट इज अनादर प्रिंसिपल वाइल ट्रीटिंग द इंडिया टेबरक्लॉसिस अवॉइड कंबाइनिंग क्रॉस रेजिस्टेंट ड्रग्स मीन्स वॉट टू फ्लोरोक्विन सो वेन वी आर गिविंग द सिक्स ड्रग्स इन इंटेंसिव फेज देर शुड नॉट बी रिपीटेशन ऑफ टू फ्लोरोक्विन ओनली वन फ्लोरोक्विन शुड बी गिवन और सेम इज इन द कंटिन्यूशन फेज Also, canamycin with amikacin should not be combined because there is a uh, there may be chances of cross resistance. What is meaning of cross resistance? If the bacilli are resistant to the canamycin, they are also resistant to amikacin and vice versa. So that is a cross resistance. So both canamycin and amikacin should not be given. Only one of them. Then, ethionamide. Etio means ethionamide. Our second line oral drug with PTO means prothionamide. So both should not be given in same patient. Either ethionamide or either prothionamide. And last is a cyclosirin with terizidone. So either of them only one drug is given. Either cyclosirin or terizidone, as there are chances of cross resistance between these two drugs. Now, how to actually include the drugs in intensive phase? They include the drugs from group one to group four in a hierarchical order. We have seen the four groups. Forget the fifth one, unclear if uh, uh, undoubtful if you can see. First group, first line oral drug. Second group, injectable drug. Third, fluoroquinolone, and fourth is a second line oral drug. So from group one drugs, we can take either pyrazinamide and ethambutol, provided the bacilli are sensitive to them. Okay, because the bacilli are already resistant to R and H, so we we should not include them. So remaining two oral drugs are pyrazinamide and ethambutol. Ethambutol. So whenever the bacilli are sensitive to them, they should be taken into the regimen. Then add one injectable drug that is group from the group two, either canamycin, amikacin, or capreomycin or streptomycin. Then third. That is one fluoroquinolones, leoflox, oflox, moxiflox, and ciproflox. So mostly leofloxacin is added from the fluoroquinolones and two group four drugs. Okay, so there are the huge list of group four drugs: ethionamide, prothionamide, cyclosirin, terizidone, paramanol salicylic acid, rifabutin, and rifapentin. So any two drugs from them they are added. So this includes the six drug. Group one, two drug. One injectable drug from two second group, one fluoroquinolone, and two group four drugs. So this is 24 to 27 month. Remember, six month. If it goes in intensive phase or continuation phase, 18 month to 24 month. But in intensive phase, nine month goes and continuation phase, 18 months. So total will be 27 months. So MDR tuberculosis treatment will be for 24 to 27. Now coming to the rifampicin resistant tuberculosis. According to both WHO and RNTCP, a case of rifampicin resistant is treated as a MDR tuberculosis. Here, the bacilli are resistant only to the rifampicin, but they are still sensitive to the isoniazid. Okay, so bacilli are sensitive to H. So this first line drug is added to the MDR regimen, both in the intensive phase as well as in the continuation phase, without changing the duration of the other drug. तो एमडीआर ट्यूबरक्लोसिस आपको पता है सिक्स ड्रग्स इन इंटेंसिव फेज एंड फोर ड्रग्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन फेज सेम है सिर्फ रिफेम्पिसिन रेजिस्टेंट में आइसोनाइजेड को बेसिला दे आर स्टिल सेंसिटिव सो वी आर गोइंग टू ऐड आइसोनाइजेड ओके इन इंटेंसिव फेज एज वेल एज इन द कंटिन्यूएशन फेज ओके नाउ इंटेंसिव फेज हमारा कितने ड्रग्स का हो जाएगा आइसोनाइजेड ऐड करने के बाद सो दैट विल बी ऑफ अ सेवन ड्रग्स सिक्स ड्रग्स जो पहले के थे और हमने आइसोनाइजेड ऐड किया Okay, seven drug. Remember that is written as a uh, short form in the bracket. Seven drugs which are the canamycin, KM, leofloxacin, LFX, ethionamide, ETO, cyclosirin, CS, pyrazinamide, Z, ethambutol, E, and H means isoniazid. And continuation phase, which was our 18 months, we gave four drugs. Now, how many will be there? Five. So, leofloxacin, ethionamide, cyclosirin, ethambutol, and H that is isoniazid. So, rifampicin resistant tuberculosis is very simple to remember. If you remember the MDR tuberculosis, only you have to add the isoniazid in the intensive as well as the continuation phase. No change in the duration. No change in any other drug. Now coming to the fourth category that is a monodrug resistant 
tuberculosis as we have seen the bacilli apart from rifampicin if they are resistant to any other first line drug it may be isoniazide ethambutol pyrazinamide or streptomycin okay so mostly we are focusing on isoniazide uh, ethambutol and pyrazinamide so uh, the as per the lcdst or lpa uh, results we are going to uh, have a diagnosis of monodrug resistant tuberculosis here what is the treatment in the intensive phase here we are going to give r r dena hai kyunki usko to resistance nahi hai baki jo teen drug bachte hai usme se kisi ek ko resistant hai isoniazide ethambutol aur pyrazinamide teenon mein se kisi ek ko resistant hai wo chhod ke baki jo do drug hai that you can give in the intensive phase so two of the first line drug to which the bacilli are sensitive okay after that which drug we have to give one injectable second line drug that is canamycin amikacin or capromycin tino me se koi ek and one fluoroquinolone mostly it is a leofloxacin which is added to make a total of five drug in the intensive phase daily for 3 to 6 month depending upon the severity and the sputum result we can some minimum in 3 month intensive phase or maximum 6 month intensive phase in mono drug resistant tuberculosis so once again we will repeat which are the five drug rifampicin फिर बाकी जो तीन ड्रग बचते हैं उसमें से कोई दो ड्रग आइसोनाइजाइड इथेम्पोटल पैराजेनेमड में से तीन में से दो ड्रग जिसको सेंसिटिव है फिर इंजेक्टेबल सेकंड लाइन ड्रग कैनामाइसिन अमाइकेसिन कैप्रोमाइसिन एंड वन फ्लोरो क्विनोलोन दिस इज इंटेंसिव फेज ओके वी विल सी द कंटिन्यू पॉली ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट ट्यूबरक्लोसिस नाउ हियर व्हाट इज देयर अपार्ट फ्रॉम रिफेम्पिसिन मींस बेसिलर सेंसिटिव टू द रिफेम्पिसिन so uh, excluding the rifampicin the three drugs are there isoniazide ethambutol and pyrazinamide now the bacilli are resistant to two drugs rather than the one drug so isoniazide ethambutol or pyrazinamide me se kisi do drug ko ho sakta hai suppose isoniazide ethambutol ko hai to pyrazinamide ko sensitive ho sakta hai okay so now what is the treatment पहले तो आपको रिपेम्पिसिन देना है क्योंकि उसको सेंसिटिव है सेकंड आपको एनी फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग टू विच बैसिलर सेंसिटिव तीनों में से दो को रजिस्टेंट है एक को सेंसिटिव है वो सेंसिटिव ड्रग आपको ऐड करना है रेजिमेन में इंटेंसिव फेस के देन रेस्ट इज सेम वन इंजेक्टेबल सेकंड लाइन ड्रग वन फ्लोरोन प्लस वन ऑफ द ओवरऑल सेकंड लाइन ड्रग सो ये हमें एड करना है यहाँ पे क्यों क्योंकि मोनो ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट में हम फर्स्ट लाइन में से दो ड्रग दे रहे ओके आइसोनाइजाइड इथेम्बोटल और पायरेजेनाइड में से कोई दो ड्रग दे रहे यहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम क्या हो गया है यहाँ पे दो ड्रग को रेजिस्टेंस है तो वी आर ओनली गिविंग वन ड्रग तो एक ड्रग कम हो गया है तो वो एक ड्रग वो रिप्लेस कर रहे हैं हम ओरल सेकंड लाइन ड्रग से सो दिस कैन बी इथियोनामाइड इटीओ सी एस साइक्लोसिरिन और पैरा अमाइनोसेलिसलिक एसिड सो हियर ऑल्सो इन इंटेंसिव फेस देर आर फाइव ड्रग्स so remember in mono drug resistant and poly drug resistant five drugs are there in intensive phase so uh, uh, so duration of intensive phase we have already seen 3 to 6 month now what is the continuation phase the continuation phase for both mono and poly drug resistant the injectable drug is stopped while the remaining four oral drugs are continued for a fixed duration of 6 month समझा द इंजेक्टेबल सेकंड लाइन ड्रग है कैनामाइसिन अमाइकेसिन एंड कैप्रेमाइसिन दैट वी हैव टू स्टॉप एंड देन वी कैन कंटिन्यू विथ रिमेनिंग फोर ड्रग्स इन द कंटिन्यूएशन फेज ओके सो इंटेंसिव फेज फाइव ड्रग इन मोनो ड्रग एंड पॉली ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट ओवर क्लॉसिस एंड कंटिन्यूएशन फेज फोर ड्रग्स फॉर सिक्स मंथ सो व्हाट विल बी अ टोटल ड्यूरेशन ऑफ रेजिमेंट If intensive phase three three month and continuation phase six month, it is nine month. But if you are extended the intensive phase to the six month and continuation six month, it is a twelve month. So range is nine to twelve month for total duration of treatment of tuberculosis in poly drug resistant tuberculosis. Forward to the. I'm skipping this isoniazide resistant. Extensive drug resistant tuberculosis. This is again important as a short note. Now here, what is the where they are basically resistant? They are MDL tuberculosis already. 
okay means resistant to both h and r r and apart from h and r the bacilli are resistant to either one of the fluoroquinolone means either moxifloxacin leofloxacin ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin and either one of the injectable second line drug that is canamycin amikacin caprimycin in tino me se kisi ek ko so bacilli is totally resistant to four drug h r fluoroquinolone and one of the injectable second line drug so it is extensive drug resistant as we have already seen the bacilli are resistant to our most effective weapons so that it is very difficult to treat it has a rapid course and there are higher chances of death or mortality in extensive drug resistant tuberculosis here the rntcp uh guidelines suggest that for intensive phase we have to give the seven drugs just like rifampicin resistant tuberculosis where we are going to give the seven drug and this intensive phase is for 6 to 12 months okay here the intensive phase is most exhaustive or most extended till 12 months while in the continuation phase there are the six drugs so here in the continuation phase there are not four drug here there are the six drugs in the continuation phase maximum drugs as far as the other types of tuberculosis is concerned in the continuation phase okay 18 months so total duration of treatment may vary from 24 to 30 months means 2 se 2.5 saal tak okay now there is not fixed regimen in the xdr tuberculosis patient because most of the time what happens the uh, treating physician he may have tried some drugs in mdr tuberculosis and the bacilli are now resistant apart from these four drugs which i have seen in definition of xdr tuberculosis the bacilli may be resistant to any other drugs either from first line or second line these drugs were not able to add now so apart from them other drugs which are not still added and to which the bacilli is found sensitive they are added but grossly they have mentioned that these are the drugs which are given which are they will see for so for 46 to 70 kg body weight patient first drug which is in given in xdr tuberculosis is capreomycin injectable dose is 1 gram or 1000 mg second is a moxifloxacin remember if the bacilli are already resistant to the moxifloxacin or capreomycin we have to add the another drug from the same group okay so this is the generalized one individualized it has to be changed okay so moxifloxacin 400 mg third is a high dose isoniazid what is the meaning of high dose isoniazid normal dose we are considering is a 300 mg 5 mg per kg or 60 kg ka patient 300 so here it is a 900 mg next is a para amino salicylic acid almost 12 g of the dose is given very high dose of para amino salicylic acid next drug is the clofazamine 200 mg then the next is a linezolid 600 mg and the next is a amoxicillin and clavulinic acid combination that is amoxicillin clavulinate here the dose of amoxicillin is 875 and the dose of clavulinic acid is 125 to so total 1000 mg dose such a two tablet in the morning and one tablet in the evening of amoxiclav so three tablets daily so this is the uh, for the intensive phase either for 6 to 12 months in the continuation phase the only thing you have to do that we have to stop the injectable drug that is capreomycin and remaining six drugs they are continued for another 18 months so this is about the xdr tuberculosis so this is a very important portion of this lecture drug sensitive mono drug resistant poly drug resistant rifampicin resistant mdr tuberculosis and xdr tuberculosis so you have to win with high chances of asking this in the part of aq or as a now moving forward to the tuberculosis in some specific population means in pregnant female breastfeeding female in hiv patient and mac infection so we'll go quickly through this tuberculosis in pregnant woman maine aapko bataya tha which is the auto uh, which is the teratogenic drug among the first line drug yes it is a uh, sorry uh, s means streptomycin so it is totally contraindicated in pregnancy because it is autotoxic to the fetus okay 
uh, as also uh, means uh, well, anyway we are not going to include the s mostly in the uh, nowadays but still it is contraindicated so never given in the pregnant female so remaining four drugs they can be given safely to the fetus and rntcp as well as who and british thoracic society now recommends the all uh, four drugs in for the total duration of six months like a drug sensitive tuberculosis 2 hrjd plus 4 hr here uh, i'm not sure but they have not included the e in the continuation phase okay but uh, it is written in the recent edition so 2 hrjd plus 4 hr that is for the pregnant woman with tuberculosis but remember z it is neither very safe nor contraindicated but still the recent guidelines tell that we can give the z depending upon our evidence based medicine so uh, the full course of tuberculosis treatment is given as the we are giving in the healthy males or females in the pregnant female also 2 hrjd plus 4 hr the only change is that e is not included here in the continuation phase but treatment of tuberculosis should not be withheld or delayed because of pregnancy okay pregnancy hai, ap, tuberculosis ki treatment baad mein dete. no we have to give immediately and all pregnant female apart from that should receive the pyridoxine 10 to 25 milligram per day so as to avoid the peripheral neuropathy type of side effects in the fetus as well as in the that pregnant so in the pregnancy 2 hrje plus 4 hr okay now breastfeeding so what is the treatment of tuberculosis in breastfeeding woman all anti tubercular drugs are compatible with breastfeeding full course should be given and breastfeeding should be continued so neither the treatment of tuberculosis nor the breastfeeding should be withheld they should be continued <clears throat> the infant should receive six month isoniazide preventive treatment after ruling out active tuberculosis okay so first we have to confirm the whether the infant has active tuberculosis or not if there is no active tuberculosis still we have to give the prophylaxis treatment with isoniazide for six months to that infant after bcg vaccination so remember immediately after the birth we are giving the bcg vaccine for prophylaxis against tuberculosis intradermal dose after that we will start with the isoniazide prophylaxis for six months if there is no active tuberculosis if there is an active tuberculosis again we have to give the full course of treatment of tuberculosis as we have seen in the drug sensitive tuberculosis in the infant okay the doses we have to given according to their body weight breastfed infants whose mothers are taking inh and those on inh preventive therapy they should be supplemented with pyridoxine 5 mg per day so infant hai to hum bolte hai ki pehle 4 mahina 6 mahina kuch nahi dena chahiye but in this type of infants we have to give the pyridoxine again medical drugs we can always give in the infants no problem in that so we should supplement that with the pyridoxine 5 mg per day so apart from isoniazide preventive prophylaxis if the mother is tuberculosis positive the infant should receive pyridoxine 5 mg per day this is about treatment of breastfeeding woman with now management of patients with adverse drug reaction so we are taking fast if there are minus adverse drug reaction to the anti tubercular drug they can be managed symptomatically and we don't have to change the medication for example if there is a nausea and anorexia then give the drug with small meals which is quite common if there is a sedation or drowsiness give the drugs before bedtime rather than giving in morning or daytime if there is a z induced arthralgia means pyrazenamide induced arthralgia we have seen hyperuricemia and gout can occur but gout is another severe one previous initially arthralgia can occur so we have to give the analgesic drug like the NSAID non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug if there is a peripheral neuritis due to isoniazide that is H we have already seen pyridoxine should be given <clears throat> so no need to stop the drug in minor side effect like this but if there are the severe side effect like skin rashes or some purpura hemolysis then we have to stop the drug promptly 
after the resolution of those reaction severe reaction the drugs are reintroduced the drugs were already stopped now we are going to reintroduce the drug but now we are going to reintroduce one at a time not four drugs or three drugs at a time we are going only one drug at a time and by challenging with small doses this is the one thing challenging which we have heard in pharmacovigilance so <clears throat> we are giving the drugs again just to see whether the, that particular side effect is occurring again or not if that doesn't occur again we can continue with increasing doses if that happens again we will stop that particular drug only and we can try another drugs but rifampicin should never be reintroduced in case of severe reactions such as hemolysis thrombocytopenia or renal failure if these three types of the adverse effects are there which are the hemolysis thrombocytopenia or renal failure rifampicin should not be repeated regarding the ethambutol it should be discontinued at the first sign of optic neuritis yesterday we have seen what is the characteristic side effect of ethambutol yes it is retrovulvar neuritis or optic neuritis or also called as a red green color blindness and whenever we have able to identify or at our earliest we have to immediately stop the ethambutol because if we immediately stop that is optic neuritis is reversible we if we delay it is it becomes irreversible <coughs> Regarding the hepatotoxicity, if hepatotoxicity occurs as an adverse effect, any three of drugs, which any three, either isoniazide, rifampicin or pyrazinamide could be causative. Okay, so there is a separate treatment protocol how to go with the hepatotoxicity. We are not going into the detail, but remember, Z should never be reintroduced if the already hepatotoxicity is there, as it is a most effective hepatotoxic, sorry, most severe uh, potent hepatotoxic drug. Now going to the next, there is a chemo prophylaxis of tuberculosis. Uh, this is the not very routinely followed in the our country. But our the purpose is in the chemo prophylaxis. Chemo prophylaxis means giving the drug as a prophylaxis before the disease develops. So where there are the chance? Uh, what is our purpose to prevent the progression of latent tubercular infection to active disease? Remember, we have now one test that is a Montex Mantox test, which we are doing in the skin as an intradermal test. So, if the positive mental test is there, then we are labeling that patient is infected with tuberculosis bacilli. There may not be or may be active disease, but the patient is infected with tubercular bacilli. Now, if the patient is infected with tubercular bacilli, the, this infection can progress to the disease depending upon the immunity of the patient. If the patient immunity is suppressed, or lower immunity that this tuberculosis infection can go into the disease so this is once it is <clears throat> so when it is not uh, progress to the disease we call it as a latent tubercular infection in such a patients we can try the chemo prophylaxis with tuberculosis so it is indicated in context of open cases who show the recent mantox conversion so if anyone is coming into the contact with positive tuberculosis patient Children with positive mantox and TB patient in the family, we can give the chemo prophylaxis. Neonate of tubercular mother, as we have already seen, we are giving the isoniazide as a prophylaxis in the infant for 6 months. And patient with certain immunosuppressive drugs or certain uh, diseases which are lowering the immunity like leukemia, diabetes, silicosis, HIV or corticosteroid therapy. Remember corticosteroid has a one side effect that latent tubercular infection can progress to the disease because corticosteroid as you know they have a uh, immunosuppression property so which is a standard drug for chemo prophylaxis very easy to remember it is only isoniazide 300 milligram which is given daily for six months so just like the we are giving in the infants but the dose here is a 300 milligram if it is a children then it is a 10 milligram per kg dose remember here it is not 5 milligram per kg dose here it is a 10 milligram per kg dose daily for the six months in the chemo prophylaxis of tuberculosis next tuberculosis in aids patient so these are like the brothers in india they are going into the shole ke hote na 
जय और वीरू वैसे ये हाथ में हाथ लेके चलते हैं सो मोस्ट ऑफ द एच आई वी पॉजिटिव केसेस दे आर वेरी हाई इंसिडेंस ऑफ को इन्फेक्टेड विथ ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस एंड वेन द ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस ऑकर्स इन ऑलरेडी एच आई वी इन्फेक्टेड पेशेंट मोस्टली इट इज एक्स्ट्रा पलमनरी ओके इट मे बी अ मेनिजल रिनल प्लूरल पेरिकार्डियल और बोन ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस इट इज मोस्टली मोर सिवियर इट इज मोर लीडल देर आर मोर चांसेस ऑफ मॉर्टेलिटी और डेथ एंड इट इज मोर इन्फेक्शियस so we have to <coughs> treat this very judiciously remember but whenever the tuberculosis occurs in hiv patient the treatment should not be withheld because of antiretroviral treatment it should be started immediately okay now what happens adverse reactions which are associated with anti tubercular drug that more common in hiv patient For example, isoniazid, NNH, INH, and neuropathy, H hepatotoxicity, they are more common in HIV patient. Rifampicin, again, ethambutol, retrobulbar neuritis, pyrazinamide, hepatotoxic hyper uh, uricemia, they are more common in HIV patients. So we have to take into the precaution. India is ranking second in the global burden of HIV associated tuberculosis. So now, how to go for the treatment? So first, anti HIV treatment, which is called as a heart. means h a a r t means what is the long form highly active anti retroviral treatment is given <coughs> as we are already giving so it should be continued and we have to look for the improvement in the cd4 cell count because once the cd4 cell count increases that immunity will be uh, increased and that will <coughs> taken care of the tuberculosis infection okay so there are the less chances of incidence of tuberculosis if it is already happen it will be a more recovered now coming to the actual treatment here the intensive phase is with all four drugs as we have already seen in drug sensitive tuberculosis that is for hrjd and that is also for the same duration that is 2 months but it is started immediately on the diagnosis of tuberculosis and here the only thing is that continuation phase is the hr only okay that is for 4 to 7 months so there there is not included ethambutol in this for the four and this is for the 4 to 7 months uh, just one um, disclaimer i want to give that i am not sure about the inclusion of e whether it is there or not but as per the uh, eighth edition of tripathi and other books it is not included in that okay so continuation phase of hr for the 4 to 7 months so total 6 to 9 months treatment is given for the treatment of tuberculosis in hiv positive patient here as there are very high chances of side effects to the anti tubercular drug pyridoxin is routinely given in a dose of 25 to 50 mg to counter at the neurological side effect of isoniazid which are more likely to be occur in the aids patient okay so remember in the pregnancy also 2 hrjd and 4 hr here also 2 hrjd and hr but the hr can be for the 4 to 7 months so you can remember that pregnancy and hiv they almost have a similar regimens only the continuation phase can be extended in the hiv patient apart from these anti tubercular and anti retroviral drug all hiv positive patient they have a higher chances of one opportunistic infection that is a pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia that's why the cotrimoxazole which is a combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole should be given prophylactically in the hiv positive tuberculosis patient so as to prevent the pneumocystis gyrovesi pneumonia and other infections which are caused by pneumocystis okay then drug interactions between anti tubercular and anti hiv drug so as we have seen rifampicin is enzyme inducer and isoniazid is enzyme inhibitor but rifampicin is a more potent enzyme inducer so if we are giving rifampicin along with anti retroviral drug especially the protease inhibitor and nnrti non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor like nevirapine and ipavirenz the rifampicin will cause the increased metabolism of this anti hiv drug and it will decrease their plasma level which can lead to the therapeutic failure that's why as we earlier see in the first lecture rifampicin is mostly replaced by 
rifabutin we in the patients of hiv and we have seen rifabutin is a less enzyme induced drug as compared to the rifampin or rifampicin that's why there are less chances of the drug interactions with the anti hiv drug okay the only thing is that we have to give some longer duration of the treatment with rifabutin okay so metabolism of nrti it is not induced by rifampicin uh, so no dose adjustment is needed so now uh, see if we are giving the nnrti or protease inhibitor we can do the replacement of rifampicin with rifabutin okay but there is a alternative regimen which include only nrti okay nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor remember this drug will be covered in detail in the antiretroviral so no, no no need to worry you will learn in detail there but nrti means non uh, sorry nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor there are three category nrti nnrti and protease so nnrti and protease can be induced by rifampicin but less chances of induction of nrti by rifampicin so rather than replacing the rifampicin with rifabutin we can continue with three nrti regimen okay here zidoudin lamudin and abacavir these are the three nrti which can be advocated for the patient who is on the rifampicin and another alternative regimen the last line you can see if we have to add only two nrti and one nnrti remember it is suggested that at least drugs from two different classes should be added in the antiretroviral therapy so two nrti and one nnrti if we are going to add that then rather than nevirapine which is nnrti we are going to give efavirenz because nevirapine there are high chances of drug and in interaction as it is more inducible if i will there are less chances of drug interaction so two nrti and one nnrti that is if i will is preferred over the nevirapine remember this part will be taken care more in the antiretroviral drug but the last point of this today's lecture is a mac of mac or mycobacterium avium complex infection <coughs> mac is a opportunistic pathogen which causes disseminated and multifocal disease disseminated means the uh, the bacilli are spread throughout the lungs like um, in happens in miliary tuberculosis and multifocal disease mean there are various foci in immunocompromised patients especially hiv patient so mac infection is common in hiv or aids patient especially when cd4 cell count drops to less than 50 cell per microliter second when the hiv rna load is high and third when there are the other opportunistic infection like pneumocystis gerosi or candidiasis or from other fungal infection which are present okay so there are high chances of mycobacterium avium intracellular complex infection in hiv patient in these conditions okay and drugs which are very effective against this mac are newer macrolides like clarithromycin and azithromycin yes macrolide groups clarithromycin infection intensive phase and maintenance phase that is for the prophylaxis of mac infection we all have a regimen in this there is a quite a uh, very uh, you can say high dose of azithromycin is given that is a 1200 mg per week or clarithromycin 500 mg bd and another second drug is a rifabutin 300 mg per day is given if either of these drug cannot be given agar azithromycin or clarithromycin nahi de sakte to rifia butin this is all about our second part of anti tubercular drug lecture just to go quickly uh, revising through the this we have seen six type of drug to uh, uh, types of tuberculosis drug sensitive tuberculosis 2 hrze plus 4 hre whether it is intensive or continuation phase then multi drug resistant tuberculosis mdr tuberculosis so we have seen in intensive phase there are six drug for 6 to 9 month duration in the continuation phase it is for the uh, 18 months then the mono drug resistant tuberculosis and poly drug resistant tuberculosis intensive phase five drug continuation phase four drug then xdr tuberculosis we have seen here there are very high chances of having a uh, 
difficult outcome or worse outcome so we have seen the treatment of that then tuberculosis in pregnancy yes apart from streptomycin which is teratogenic which we, we can give other four drug 2 hrjd plus 4 hr only e is not included okay then breastfeeding all drugs can be given and apart from that we can give the isonized prophylaxis with bcg vaccination to the infant if the mother is hiv positive then HIV, uh, sorry, chemoprophylaxis for tuberculosis, isonized 300 milligram adult dose, child dose can be uh, appropriate as per their weight. And the last is a HIV in tuberculosis, both drugs, both treatments should be uh, given simultaneously. No need, no need to stop anything. Only thing you can change, rifa, rifampicin can be replaced with a rifa butin and last is a mac infection where the newer macrolides like azithromycin or clarithromycin they are highly effective so this is all from my end for the anti-tubercular drugs uh,